Why should I care for absolute convergence? Very good question. Let's have a look. So right here, let's take a look at the alternating version of the harmonic series. 1 minus 1 half plus 1 third minus 1 fourth and so on, so on, so on. This right here actually converges. And the answer for that is LN2, which is about 0 0.693. Here, I will have a DVM video on this data out. But let's take this result for now. Well, if we have the absolute value version of this, we get the harmonic series, 1 plus 1 half, and so on, so on, so on. Everything is positive, and when you add them up, we get infinity. This diverges to infinity, which I have a video on this already, so make sure you go check this out so you can see the details on that. So in this case, we say the series that we have right here, negative 1 raised to the n minus 1 over n, it converges, but it does not converge absolutely, because once you apply the absolute value, this version diverges to infinity. We say this series converges conditionally. And why do we care about checking for absolute convergence? Well, here's the deal. If we only have a series that converges conditionally, we will have to be really, really careful with the order of the series that's presented to you. Because if you switch the order of the series right here, you can end up with a different sum. In fact, you can make this sum equal to anything that you want depending on how you rearrange them. So, let me show you. If you look at this series right here, if I put it down as 1, and then I want to put down plus 1 third next, uh, 1 and 1 third, and then let me write down the minus 1 half right here, and then you see what I'm doing, right? I'm just going to put down the next one, which is what? 1 over 5, let me just write that down, and then the next one is going to be 1 over 7, and then I'm going to subtract the 1 over 4. So we have two odds, and then an even, and then the even terms are the negative versions, and then again two odds, and then an even one, and then so on, so on, so on. If you have this series, it actually equals to 3 over 2, ln2. You have this extra factor, 3 half. And in fact, this is a little bit bigger than that. 50% bigger than that to be exact. So, how exactly is this possible? Well, let me show you. Check this out. Let me write down 1 minus 1 half plus 1 third minus 1 fourth. And then let me just put down a few more terms. And this right here should be pretty good. Plus dot dot dot. And this is equal to ln2. I will be looking at this and then multiply both sides by 1 half. And now let's just go ahead and distribute the 1 half. So this times that we get 1 half, and I'm going to put it down right here, 1 half. What I'm going to do next is I'm going to leave a gap. So 1 half times this, which is negative 1 over 4, and there's a little gap. And then continue. The next one, we have 1 over 6, and that's positive. And then continue. This times this is negative 1 over 8. And I think that should be enough. Of course, there's no way for us to write down like infinitely many terms right here, right? So I'll just put down plus dot dot dot. And this right here, 1 half times ln2. So this should also give you just 1 half times ln2. Okay. Now, I'm going to write down the original series again, which is the one right here. And then we have the next one, which is minus 1 half. And then the next one, which is plus 1 third, and then minus 1 fourth, and then plus 1 fifth, and then minus 1 over 6, and then plus 1 over 7, and then minus 1 over 8, and so on, so on, so on. And this version right here is just ln2. Now, ladies and gentlemen, we are going to be looking at this two very long addition like this. Nothing plus 1 is just 1, but 1 half minus 1 half, they cancel. So we just have the next term, which is 0 plus 1 third. That's just 1 third. Next, negative 1 fourth minus 1 fourth. That's negative 2 over 4, which is negative 1 half. Look, continue. The next one is this, which is plus 1 over 5. And this and that cancel. 
And then the next one is plus 1 over 7. And the next one, this, subtract that, negative 2 over 8, which is negative 1 over 4. And this pattern can keep on going. And as you can see, all we did was just, we, re we just kind of rearrange the negative 1 half, and then the one so it's going to switch that, right? Again, we have an R denominator, an R denominator, and then the even one, and then the even one right here is so two R's and one even. When we do it like this, the result is what? One half, and this is like one. One half plus one is three over two, times ln two. Whoa. So, if you just have a conditional convergence series, do not rearrange the terms because the sum will be different depending on how you arrange it. Yep, so that's the dangerous part. That's what we care for absolute convergence.